Uh, so tonight we're going to be making some music in Ableton Live, doing some synthwave music. And uh, we're going to be starting from total scratch. Working with, hang on, let me mute the background music. Uh, working with Big Blue from Super Smash Bros. Melee. And we're going to be doing this in like a synthwave kind of style. Um, like, uh, you know, Time Cop and Laserhawk. Mitch Murder, those kind of guys. Uh, it's a style of music I really like. I've really been having fun with lately. And, uh, and we're going to do our best to turn Big Blue into that kind of sound. Uh, I have a couple new things going on. You'll notice my stream looks a little different. There's some stuff up there. I can't tell where I'm pointing. There's some stuff up there that shows like who's subscribed lately and stuff. And you can see I got two cameras going. Uh, this one's actually my main video camera that I use for like live video. Not live video regular video, uh, and Canon just dropped a utility that lets me use it as a webcam, too. So that video just got a whole lot nicer. Uh, you can see I'm in, I haven't really talked about this space yet, um, but we sold our last house uh, about six months ago now. I don't know, I don't even know what month it is anymore. Uh, so I'm in a bit of a new space, and we can see, here, I'll bring us back to the big window. Am I all the way zoomed out? Yes, I am. Okay, you can see I got some, some fun posters on the wall back there. Some Captain America, Iron Man. Uh, there's Spidey on the left. He's just a little cut off. And then Link on the right is kind of the odd man out in that bunch. But I couldn't find four Marvel posters at that Comic-Con booth that I was at. So I settled for three Marvel and, <laughs> and Link. Uh, but it worked out. All right, so let's, uh, let's start messing around with this. Uh, if you haven't played Melee for a million hours like I have, this is what the song sounds like. So let's start with getting that intro down. Uh, I want to give us a little bit of lead time here. We might add more of an intro in front of this, but I'm going to start with uh, Tao Yuno, which is their um, kind of Juno emulation. This is one of my favorite synths for any style of music, but particularly this, particularly for synthwave. Looks like this is in B minor. It's weird, I've covered this song before, and I played it in A minor last time, and I just realized that. I covered the song like, man, eight years ago, and I played this in A minor for some reason, and I don't know why. I think the original NES version might have been in A minor, uh, but this one's in B minor. And we're going off the Melee version, so we'll do this in B minor today. <laughs> How's it going, Tyler Biggs? Yes, large cerulean. What's going on, Franco? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let me know how the, the video is, how the audio is on this one. I'm experimenting with a lot of new gear, uh, a whole new setup, different streaming software. So I'm, I'm kind of trying a lot of things at once here. Please let me know if stuff is working. Okay, so uh, these two buttons here, the chorus, chorus one and two, uh, I'm just going to punch them both in and we immediately get this nice big cool chorus sound. Let's add a little bit of release to this. Maybe that's not as cool as I thought it was. Um, but the key to this sound is going to be Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is an incredible algorithmic reverb. Just gets some really, really cool sounds. Why did I just put that on a new audio track? It needs to go on a reverb track. There we go. Let's send some sound over there. That's more like it. Okay, let's lay down the track. I'm going to play this in slow because I cannot hit these chords quite fast enough. I'm a guitar player. I'm not really a piano player. Oh, I need a metronome, please. Okay. 
Good, let's quantize that. And uh, do I have perfect pitch? No, actually, Stephen, I don't. Um, I have pretty okay pitch memory, so I can like recall a pitch pretty decently. If I need an E on, on site, I can usually pull that off. Uh, but I definitely can't identify sound by um, by like just hearing it. I just got lucky with the B minor. I have really good relative pitch. I'm very comfortable identifying intervals between notes, and I think that's more useful most of the time um, than than being able to tell you that's an A7. Okay, let's get some drums. I want a Lindrum. I just already know I want a Lindrum because this is the 80s and it's got a sound like a Lindrum. Let's get a drum rack going. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't want that. Explicitly did not want that. I want this there. Okay. Oop. This one's nice. I'm just going to try to keep things relatively tidy. We'll do more organization as the session grows. But let's get our drums down. Okay, super basic drums. We're going to make those more interesting later. Uh, I just played that in literally using the two keys on my keyboard. Um, Ableton maps your, your actual keyboard to a MIDI keyboard, um, so I don't even have to go through the immense effort of moving my hand down here, which is nice. Okay, and I think we can ditch the, the reference track for a moment. I've played the song, I've heard this song enough times playing Melee. I feel like I want this a little bit faster. One seventy eight feels right. Tyler, thank you. I I meant to do the research on this before, because uh, I knew I played it in the wrong key originally. Um, okay, original was in A sharp, and Mario Kart was in A minor. So the Mario Kart remix, I bet that's why I did it. Because Mario Kart 8 had just come out when I covered that. So I bet that's the reason. That's such a good mix, too. Such a good remix. Everything in the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack is ridiculous. They're so good. Watch the videos from that sometime. It's just like a whole studio band just playing that stuff live all the way through. And there's this one saxophone lick from it that's become like a, a jazz meme among sax players. It's, it's great. Definitely worth watching. Okay, I want a bass of some kind underneath this, um, and I haven't decided what synth I'm going to use for it. Let's start with Tau, see where it goes. There we go. I want a really plucky synth. Let's 
think I might use Micro Shift for this. Which kind of intends to do the same thing, but I can get a lot more control out of it. No, I honestly am not liking where this goes. Uh, I'll, I'll track it with this, and I may... I'll probably re replace it with Serum in a second. Let's see. Why is that so quiet? It's so quiet. I'm going to turn everything else down to match it. Okay, that's better. Let's play that in. I'm just going to loop like two bars of that. Yeah, we're going to we're going to replace that with Serum. Serum doesn't like immediately put you in the 80s, but it gives me so much more control. It is also much louder. Wow. That's getting a little more aggressive, like I'm looking for. Okay. Is that starting to feel like synthwave? I think so. Cool. Uh, now we need to add those little fills in between. Ba -da 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 -da, that thing. Uh, I think we're going to use, we're going to lean on serum for the leads in this one. I lean on Serum for everything. Okay. That's the best feeling, Franco. When you go back after you've been soloing one track for a while and you hear the whole picture again, it's amazing. Uh, all right, that's that's going to be a really simple, uh, like saw, unison lead thing. That's the nice thing about synthwave; you don't have to get really deep into the sound design of it. You can just play with some nice sounds. All right, so we have a little harmonized lead that hits here. Uh, I forget where it is. That didn't sound good. I didn't like it. I want a little pitch bend on it, like... There it is. So you do this little lilt up into that. There we go. I have a keyboard desk now, by the way. I don't know if I pointed this out. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, or I think I posted it on the YouTube posts as well. Uh, I got an output platform. Brand new desk. Uh, built it on Sunday. 
and then um, kind of wired it all up today. And I'm super happy with it. I'm going to do a whole review of this thing probably later this week. Um, but yeah, I have a keyboard tray now, so it's in front of me instead of over here, which is great. Okay. Oh, that's not there. <laughs> Where is it? I know this song. There's our little lead. I think that needs to be a bit brighter. Okay, that's working. Uh, let's add the harmony. And I'm just gonna drag these to their, their harmonic positions because I want this to line up absolutely perfectly. I know the last three notes. Seems right. Oop. There's the harmony. Let's give that a little pan. This one to the left. This one to the right. All right. Cool. Same story over here. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da -da. And this is really a triplet. That needs to be ba da 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 da. Did I get that timing right? Yes. Okay. Need to fix that on the other one too. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna uh, double up this chord sound. You can actually just do this with a group. This is one thing I love about Ableton that I don't think any other DAW really has, that I can just get these really complex chains going with multiple instruments all kind of layered on top of each other, all using the same MIDI. I know I could probably do it in Pro Tools with like MIDI tracks running to a bunch of auxes, but it just gets, it gets tricky.
I forgot how simple that was. <laughs> That's literally two, two notes. I could have copy and pasted that. And let's get like a pad going here, maybe? How many instances of Serum do you think we can run? So for this pad, I'm really just making a very filtered down, wide tuned saw wave. A lot of detune on it. A little bit of, little bit of attack and release, soften the kind of, the kind of sound there. And then I just have it going through a reverb built into Serum, not the the main reverb. I mean, I'll probably push it through there too. But this is just, um, yeah, you really can't go overboard with reverb on this. I know this is going to get way too bassy, so I'm just going to preemptively put a high pass filter on it. Yeah. And this is just going to kind of hold down the background uh, for that melody that's going to take over the verse in a second. Cool. Obviously, really simple. Uh, and let's keep organizing. This is our bass. This is our pad. This is our intro lead one and intro lead two. Bring the chords down here with them. Okay. And just keep things nice and neat. Let's get another lead going. I can start with the, the sound I designed for those intro leads. Well, I think I want to work on them more too at some point. Um, yowza. That's loud. I apologize. I'm not used to playing this in B minor. I've played this a million times in A minor and not in B. <laughs> Not my best, not my best key on the keyboard. Okay, let's try it. That is a start. We'll play with that sound. I'm not crazy about it yet, but we'll get there. Whoa, that's not a drum. There it is. <laughs> Need a metronome for this part, though. Okay, 
You may be wondering, what the heck was that? <laughs> That's the next section of the song. Yeah, we're doing it in that octave. Okay. <laughs> I can't play this up to speed. That's okay. I'm not I'm not pretending to be able to play this. This is just a production thing. And I think we're going to use something like the intro chords for this, but I'll make a separate track. Because I probably want to tweak the sound a little bit. Okay, let's uh, let's see where we're at right now. I like the skeleton of this so far, uh, but I think it has a really long way to go production-wise. So let's see what else we can add to what we have so far. Let's sort of get more of a, a vision for this going. Thank you so much, Izzy. I have a student named Izzy, really incredible bass player. Okay, uh, we are we are getting there. I have some more drum sounds I want to add. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for tuning in, man. We're going to go to... There's a tom sound I love for this. What is it? Nope, not that. Nope. Where is it? There it is. I found it. Uh, I want to try something. And I don't know how this is going to go. Let's try it. That's so much fun. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't tried that before. Okay, so what I just did, instead of taking these five samples... Which are really just the same sample played back at different speeds. And putting them on this drum rack here, so I could play with the rest of the drums, like a drum set. I instead just made a whole instrument of the tom. 
So it can go like... Oh, come on, that was gonna be cool. It can go like this. Which is a really fun sound, with reverb. So now we have like this big silly drum... thing. And that's awesome. Um... I wonder, can I pan that according to the note? Or is that asking too much? That's probably asking too much. All right, in that case, I'm going to, I want it to be able to like pan around as it goes down the drums, like a big stupid 80s drum set. So we are just gonna go with drum rack. Fine, ruin my fun, Ableton. There's probably a way to do it. I just can't think of it. Okay, it's at them backwards. Okay. Start with this one. And this one. This one. Skip the sharp notes. There it is. Okay. Good. Big stupid drum sounds acquired. Let's just bring these up to the same volume the rest of them are at. You notice I'm not using a hi-hat on this? Um, I might add one later, but I I've often found with the little I've messed around with this genre that a hi-hat doesn't really fit in the drum set. At least for like a really driving tune like this. So, I don't know. We'll see. So let's add in some, uh, some big stupid tom runs. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit because I might want to do some like 16th stuff. And that's really hard to do on a keyboard playing drums. I don't know if that's really stupid or not, but we'll see. Uh, and actually, I want to get these all going to their own reverb send. We're going to get another instance of Valhalla going here. Same situation. Might be a little compressed, maybe? Yeah, I think we'll do that. And then let's route the sends there. There it is. Okay. That's fun. <laughs> uh, and then we need to pan them. Just pan them around a little bit. Starting with the highest, we'll go audience perspective, I guess. So that puts the highest tom on the right. Oh, what do you mean? They're all, why, are, why would they be linked? What? What's happening, man? Oh, no. Understand. Don't understand. If anybody knows why these are linked, please tell me in the chat. It's boggling my darn mind. Chain panorama. Are these all one chain? Somehow?
All right, well, that's frustrating, but I'll deal with it later. Maybe I can do it at the sample level? Even though that's silly. Yeah, I guess I can. Okay. Awesome. I hope this is streaming in stereo. Otherwise, I've just been fooling around with this for no reason. <laughs> oh, now they're separate? Why are they separate now? What? And now I actually want them moving together. Come on, man. <laughs> how it goes. That is just how it goes. Okay. That last run is just too much. I'm going to get rid of the 16th notes. As much as I'd love to have that run there, at 178 BPM, it's, it's just way too fast. Arp. Cool. Nice. That's good. Put that right at the beginning. Right there. And right here in the verse. I don't really know why these overlapped like that. Let's just merge them. Just mumbling to myself. How are you guys doing? Hope everything's going well. Everything's weird right now for a lot of people. Hope it's all good. That was not loud enough. I've never said that about a crash symbol before. Feels like there should be another one there. That lead feels like it needs some articulation to it. Like a, the starts of the notes need something to happen there. So we can we could do that a few ways. We could automate the detune to, to kind of pump a little bit right at the start, like this. Kind of sounds like the lead from uh, like Mega Man X. No, that's not working. Um, we could do kind of a bump in a filter. That could work. Introduce some noise in there. Uh, did I goof that up? I must have messed that up when I was quantizing. That 
that is the actual rhythm. All right, that's getting better. Might have some kind of more attacky synth layered in there. I don't know yet. Cool. Let's layer this pad with like a big kind of keyboard thing. Um, let's use a profit for that. Mm, no. Let's use FM8. I want a really, like, like, DX7 kind of sound on this. Big cheesy keyboard, you know? So that's where we are. We're in big cheesy keyboard town. Let's see what we can find there. Oh. I need to talk about this for a second. I have the patches from Sonic 3 and Knuckles on this computer, <laughs> and that's insane to me. I lo I, somebody ripped them into a format that the, um, the Yamaha DX7 can read, which the Native Instruments FM8 can also read. And as a result, I have just all the sounds from, like, just hear this bass. Oh, come on. No, that's, that's not. Yeah, where's Marble Garden? Oh, I got Flying Battery. Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> yes, literally all of them. Every single patch from every... Every single game. I mean, every... See how many Sonic 3 bass lines I know. I don't know that one too well. Yeah, so much fun. This is all, uh, it's got the, um, that's a magical sound right there. Like that just takes me back to like five years old. If I could actually play the chords right. Anyway. So this is, this is fun. I got distracted. I forget what we even came here for. We came here for keyboards. I'll do a whole video going through those sometime. That'll be so much fun. Um, I do also, man, I had the, I had the Yamaha DX7 factory bank in here too at some point, but I don't remember where I put it. That's not great. That's decent. I don't like how much motion is in that, though. It's got so much rhythm built into it. No, I do not want rhythmic. I want dry or simple. <laughs> is there just boring piano sounds in here anywhere? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. There's something.
Okay, let's push this up an octave. There it is, listen to that. I just need to hear that a few more times. Big stupid Tom run coming out of those drums. Okay, we need something doubling up the uh, that lead in the chorus. I think that's a good job for FM8 as well. Because it's like these horns. Let's see if we have any horn sounds built into this. <laughs> Let's see what Sonic has. That's not quite right for this. I kind of want big brass kind of sound. Big stupid chord at the end there. I, I hate... the Billy Shears chord from the Beatles. Never been a fan of it. I think it's going to play not the entire melody doubling the lead. Like it's going to do the... But then jump to the chords there, like this. Yeah, that works. These are sixteenths. No. That's a little cheesy. I might come back to that sound. We'll see. Let's see what else we got here. That's weird. That's kind of more like what I was looking for. That's probably not really... 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, now we're going to add a profit. It's based on a uh, sequential circuits profit uh, six, I think was the, the actual model. The five and then the six is the new reissued version. I forget who makes it now. I haven't kept up well with actual hardware since. I'm a a big plug-in nerd, but not that great with actual hardware. Okay, there's one specific sound I always use the profit for, and I should really just make it a preset, but I haven't, so you get to watch me build it. <laughs> and it's it's this cool, like, bow kind of bass that just closes down after it plays. We're getting close. That is just about the sound. We're just going to mix in a little bit of noise. There it is. Okay, cool. And I'm just playing that in octaves with my left hand. A low note and a high note. Uh, in fact, we're going to get so lazy and just make Ableton play the octave for us. Oh, it bottoms out before that A flat. That's a bummer. Can I force it to play lower? No, I guess not. Oh, but I can shift the frequencies. There we go. Okay, so this is going to make for an awesome kind of supplementary bass. In addition to that quick bow, 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 one we've got going, this almost acts like a crash symbol, kind of accentuating the beginning of each chord change. I think we're going to use it in the beginning, let it sit out in the verse, and then bring it back in the chorus. Not even sure if we're going to use it in the beginning. Let's see. Kind of just, I really want to save it for just like big notes. I think it might just hit on the first B of each, each like four measure phrase. We'll see. Oh yeah, it's not even going to hit the second one. It's just going to hit that first one and then die out in time for the chord change. And another one. Bring it back in at the chorus. There it is. Okay. Cool.
cool. Getting cool. That's got to be reverby. Nice. All right, that sounded beefy. I like that. I don't like this stopping and starting I did on this part, though. Yeah, we're going to ditch that. I think it might just hit those last three notes, maybe. do at the end there. Oh, those were where I tried to play triplets. Quantize didn't like that. Okay. I want these intro chords just a little bit more aggressive. We're going to play with them just a moment more and then we'll move on to the next section. Uh, so we're going to do that thing I did earlier where the it kind of detunes and then retunes itself with this. Whoa. What else? What did I do? <laughs> there we go. And the last thing we're going to do to add just a little bit more aggressive impact to that is actually have the pitch automate on each hit. It's going to sound really weird at first, but as we dial it in, it'll get better. Just makes each chord kind of this quick laser burst. And how about a little echo on that? Okay. 
and I want the drums to kind of hold off on those those hits. Let them just kind of step back a second and let those those leads come through. So we're gonna maybe cut the snare at those points yet? I'm really not sure. Let's see what that does. Maybe that works. Let's see. Cool. That crash needs to be louder. Starting to feel like what I was looking for. This is good. Okay, something needs to happen here because we've we've already heard this. So something else needs to come in on top and add a little bit of, of uh, change, a little bit of interest and excitement. I have a couple ideas. We could start really simple and then, I don't know, get weird. We haven't used Tau in a while. Let's bring Tau back in. This is going to be a really quick uh, kind of high ARP, or maybe just, maybe just chords? I don't know yet. That's not where that starts. It's right here. I can't decide if I like that or not. I don't think I do. No, that's terrible. Uh, how about just a really high synth string, maybe? Let's do some FM strings there. This is what it's all about. It's just experimenting. That could work. And maybe an electric guitar kind of just playing some long notes. Uh, that needs to bend down to a A sharp at that point. Uh, Steven, thank you. Uh, how did I go about learning this tool set? Over a really long period of time. Um, I've been using Ableton Live since, man, I was probably 14, and I'm 29, oh god, now. Um, so, yeah, 15 years of, of messing around with this. Starting with the light version that came with, um, not this keyboard, but the one I had before it, the old Axiom 49. Um, I started with Ableton Live Lite, just started 
just dove in and messed around. There weren't even YouTube tutorials yet. There, were, there wasn't even YouTube yet. And um, I don't know. You just dive in. You start messing with it. There, there's so much good information out there now. So many great tutorials. Uh, watching live streams like this helps. I know I'm going a little fast. I, if you have questions, I'm happy to explain specific stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just just diving in and playing with it. And you don't have to use all these tools. I have like 16 different tool sets running at once. There is plenty built into Ableton, and then there is plenty in the native instruments world. Uh, the complete, you know, this is native instruments here. Anytime you see me using Contact. That's native, um, and that's a whole world unto itself. And then there's Serum, which is an incredible, ridiculous instrument on its own. So these are all separate, you know, disciplines you can spend time with. And when I got Serum, uh, man, probably four years ago, I dove in and watched like 10 tutorials in a row on it just to understand what the heck was going on in it. Um, and that's what I do whenever I get a new tool. Uh, for example, Massive X just came out last year, um, which looks like a really, really sick instrument. If it'll load, please load. Ooh, updating content, fun. I regret this immediately. Oh, there's just so much content, isn't there, Native? You gonna update all day? <laughs> anyway, so Massive X looks really sick, and I just haven't even had the chance to play with it yet. Um, I'm gonna delete that before it loads anymore. Content. Go away, Massive. I don't actually know you yet. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many tools out there, and there's stuff I'm not using. There's, there's stuff like... Um, like Spitfire seems like a really cool collection of orchestral samples. And I've been meaning to pick that up, but that would be a whole, you know, week getting to know those that I just don't have time for yet. So I work with the tools I understand. You start with a little bit and you just work your way up. You take your time and you make great music with the stuff you have. Let's see how that synth string sounds. Okay, it needs to hit just a little bit sooner. So it's okay if this has a really short attack. Come on, happen sooner, please. Cool. Um, you can see I'm thoroughly abusing micro shift in this. I don't think I've talked about what micro shift does. Um, I'll show you on. Something as simple as, like, a grand piano. Uh, so, this is a piano. Sustain pedal. There it is. Okay. Uh, and then, this is MicroShift. And MicroShift emulates, uh, I think it's specifically an old harmonizer piece of gear. And on a piano, it makes it sound like a weird old parlor piano, you know? I'm going to do some electro swing. But it, it just widens a sound. And it does so by detuning it. And making multiple delays that all happen really fast. And when you add that all together... It gives it some width. Uh, piano was a bad example, but I am using it on a lot of things to just kind of widen them up a little bit, give them a little more sound. Let's hear it on the Prophet. Here's without. You can hear it straight down the middle. But with Micro Shift, it's got kind of some space to it, some dimension. So. That's, that's what it helps add, is complexity, space, helps keep things from feeling like they're, they're right here in front of you. We want to we wanna kind of create an ambience around it.
It's out of guitar. I'm just realizing I haven't actually plugged in my Axe Effects yet, so we're just going to go direct. Whoopsie. Go with the big red one today. It is so quiet. I'm going to put an amp sim on here and just hang tight for one second. Eh. I'm using my, um, my discrete eight interface for an amp sim, and I, I just don't like it that much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Antelope. Um, yeah, we're going to go to, tell me I have it. Please tell me I have it. Jason. This is Toneforge Jason Richardson, and it's my favorite amp simulator on the ship. Anybody play Mass Effect? <laughs> I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite amp simulator. Okay. I don't think I'm actually gonna... Yeah, I don't want to actually play the lead on this. I just want... I need a gate on this, jeez. Okay. Uh, I just want some, like, cool, spacey intro licks. I just want to feel like I'm driving a convertible in Miami. That's all I want. That's all I ever want. But not right now, because boy, is there a lot of coronavirus there. Later, when things are okay again. That's when I'll drive a convertible in Miami. Okay. That was a good test note. <laughs> okay, let's see how stupid this sounds. Uh, let me remember what key I'm in. B minor, B minor, that's it. That was bad. That was terrible. Getting there. Okay, uh, I'm okay with that for now. I 
I do want it to sound a little more placed back there. We'll see. Yeah, Steven, it's all about the little details. It, it really is. Um, because these songs, I mean, this is, this is just, how many tracks do we have here? Maybe 12, 13? Uh, I've done sessions with, you know, 120 tracks. And this, it adds up and they just become like little puzzle pieces you have to fit together. Yeah, so I'd like this to feel just kind of, I keep using the word space, but I really want this to feel like back there, like, like a mile away over there. There's a, there's a dude playing guitar on his roof. <laughs> That's what we hear. <laughs> I think this might deserve its own instance of Valhalla. Yeah, that's getting there. Pan it to the left just a little. Okay, now we can move on to the next section of the song. Uh, we have kind of this... This solo duel that happens here in the original. This, um... What I can't believe about that is I, I never played the original F Zero, um, but I, I couldn't believe that that entire crazy solo is in the original. Like some some dude just programmed the craziest guitar solos ever in in some old genuine chip tune. I love it. Uh, same goes for Mega Man X. There's just some ridiculous like fake guitar playing on these albums. Uh, I call them albums on these these old games. Uh, I. I need to look into who composed the Mega Man X stuff because he must have been just a total metalhead. Okay. Uh, now this is like eight times around this one chord progression. And it just repeats that for a while. I'm not a good finger drummer, guys. And that needs crashes. We could bring the pad back here, I think. I can actually arm the pad. Hello. We'll see. I might move that to a different instrument for this section. I don't want it to be too distracting from the lead. Well, we'll try it out.
and it repeats. And that is where it changes. We get an A chord there instead of going back down to F sharp minor. Okay, and that actually takes us back around to the A section again, the first part. Uh, we'll play this down on a lead here. Again, I'm going to play this slow because, boy, do I not know this part on keyboard. I know it very well in A minor on guitar, but I want this on keys, so... So we'll see how this goes. That's the first part. I know that much. <laughs> Sloppy, but I'll, I'll mess with that. I'll do the answers in a second. It's like this question answer kind of thing. So we got Should learn these before I play them. There it is. Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to practice this line. I got that this that I can kind of fumble my way through, but it's this ending it has a really specific melody.
We're going real slow, folks. We're going down real slow. Okay, so we're starting here. Oh, that's really close. All right, that's close enough to try, and then I can always edit the MIDI later. Here we go. Oh, I got the run, and then I just, my brain stopped working. <laughs> Okay, that's so close. I just don't think I got the middle of this just right. Okay, I think we got it. And if we don't got it, I'll just, I'll just write it in by hand, but I just really wanted to get this. Oh, I was so close. One more, one more. Okay, we're going to get the second half of that now. Okay, that's the line. I got it. That's as good as it's going to get. Oh, we were so close. By the way, the only reason I'm comfortable doing this slow down and then speeding it back up is because I, I don't plan on, like, claiming this was played live in any way. This is going out as a produced track. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not claiming to have these keyboard skills. If this was a guitar thing, I would absolutely work on it until I could play it live at speed. Uh, anything you see in videos is 100% that. That's, like, one rule I really, really stick to is if I can't play it, I don't do it. Okay, let's add those final hits in. Oh, we have another part to do. All right, let's do the other, the other weed.
Okay. We're going to play this a little slow. I can... I have played this line up to speed because I played it in the Big Blue video, but that was in A minor, and I don't know it in B minor. So, <laughs> here we go. I want to play this with the tr with me, not with Big Blue. Okay, there we go. So close. You know what? Maybe this should be on guitar. Maybe this answer should be on the guitar, because in the other time I did this, uh, I had the guitar play the question and the synth played the answer, but I can flip it around because I got the synth going first this time. I think I'm going to try that. So let's, uh, let's get the guitar back over here. Different guitar. Frankly, the one I should have grabbed the first time, to be honest. Okay. That's kind of cool. Okay, definitely don't know this on guitar. We're going to try this slow first, but I will play this at speed because guitar doesn't like speed up well. Okay, that I went better than it deserved to, to be honest. Get some ping pong on this. Okay. Ah. I don't know about the bends on that. Okay, yeah. So, cool. All right, so that's the first two licks. Th those I can play at speed, I think. Let's try it. I was so close. Let's try that again.
Uh, and this lick. It is so close to being Careless Whisper. <laughs> That'll probably be a pretty sick cover now that I think about it. <laughs> someone did that, didn't they? Didn't someone do like a metal version of Careless Whisper? Was it like Seether or something? Man. All right. Uh... I'm going to play it an octave down from where the synth is playing it. So we get... Uh... There it is. Let's try that. I've been playing this wrong for like five years now, apparently. There's definitely some notes I got wrong in my last cover of this. And muscle memory is fighting me on that. Oh. This is cool. It's not feeling very synth wavy now that I'm like actually hearing it all. I don't know. We might revisit this another time. We'll see. Uh, let me hear from the beginning, see where we're at, see if I can get my head around this whole situation. Yeah, it's just like not synth wavy. I don't know. It was feeling really cool at the beginning and it slowly gets less and less like synth wave and more and more just like standard longest solo ever. Um, and I really wanted to stay out of this sound or in, in this sound and out of my, my usual tone. Uh, I do, I, I want to get my head out of this song for just one second. I want to jump over to something else I've been working on. This was like my first experiment with Synthwave sound. Let's see if it loads. Okay. I first want to see if the drums work in this, because I I relocated all my drum samples earlier today. And everything's Oh yes. Are they still there? Okay, so this is We've been working on uh on Big Blue for about two hours. This song I have probably more like an entire week or two into. So this is a lot further along. If this shows you kind of where 
where my head is at regarding this whole sound, uh, I think this will this will be a bit better of a picture of of what I'm going for. I think. So this is Chemical Plant Zone from Sonic Two. So that, that's kind of the, the synthwave vibe I've been playing with these last couple weeks. Um, and that's where I want Big Blue to go. Uh, these, are, these are both going to come out really soon. Hopefully probably next two weeks for Chemical Plant. And then probably two weeks after that for Big Blue. Um, just coming out on like Spotify and iTunes and stuff. I, I, there's not much I could do in the way of a performance video for them. Um, cause it's, it's more about the atmosphere of the music, but I'll, I'll probably do like a, I don't know, something, something video wise, maybe just a visualizer playback on YouTube. Uh, but either way, this is, this is kind of a new thing I'm playing with. I also do have like a, um, a much more traditional straight up longest solo ever metal album coming out really soon too. Uh, I have both of these projects I'm working really hard on, uh, especially the metal album. I've been, I've had that. I've had this metal album on on deck since before Green Hill Funk, my last album. Uh, this new album, I've been working on it a really long time, so I hope it comes out well. Uh, it's going to be like nine full-length songs. Um, Green Hill Funk was kind of like a 20-minute a long album. This is, this is going to be more like an hour situation. And I'm really, really psyched about the arrangements I have on it, but it's taking forever to finish shooting it. Uh, so I'm, I'm playing with these in the meantime to kind of get my head away from that. How's it going, Mulcha S? Hello from South Korea. Hope everything's going well. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks, Victor and Steven. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this one. I just love, like, experimenting with new sounds. I did the whole Green Hill Funk thing, trying to do, like, a vintage Motown sound. Uh, and this is this is just going for that, that like Kavinsky, Testarossa overdrive kind of sound that I've always really enjoyed. Spoilers on the new metal album? Yeah, in a in a bit. <laughs> if you stick around, I think I'm gonna go till ten tonight. If you stick around, maybe the last like half hour, I'll take you through some of the metal album, but I'll probably cut it out of the live stream, uh, out of the uh, the playback. I mean, so. Um, let's, uh, let's spend a bit more time on Big Blue and then, yeah, I'll, I'll jump over to Pro Tools and we'll see what's going on over there. Okay. First off, those leads, 
don't fit here. Um, yeah, they need to be something a little simpler. No pitch bend, no overlap, no nothing. Really simple sound. Okay, yeah, that's that's a little more appropriate, I feel like. Something about the serum thing, it just stuck out in like a modern way that I did not want this to feel like. I also maybe want to experiment with some side chaining on the bass. I'm not sure yet. Okay, a little subtle, really subtle side chaining works on that. Uh, the side chain effect works a lot better in the kind of four on the floor dance groove ones, which I have one more really stupid synthwave remix planned that I think is going to be the next one. Uh, I think we'll tackle that next week, maybe. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun and stupid, and that's like more of a four on the floor groove. We'll we'll check that out next week. But uh, okay. Okay, that's so much better. That's putting me much more in a synthwave mood. And I think I'm going to start over with this lead sound. Just because it, it needs to be so simple. So stupid simple. It's just going to be a saw wave and maybe a square wave.
Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to end up changing that lead sound a lot. I'm just going to go listen to like a ton of synthwave this week and see what other lead sounds I hear. See what I can kind of aim in the direction of. Okay. Uh, Victor asked, what do I use to route sound from my DAW to OBS for streaming? And the answer is a lot of things. <laughs> yes, Shovel Knight's an awesome game. Um, yeah, so, man, have I tried everything. I've tried Voice Meter, which is the one everybody online tries to tell you to use, and it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Um, I mean, it's a fine program, but it does not work for this situation for me. I get, like, buzzing and crackling and everything, and it's it just doesn't work. Um, I have also tried the the probably the simplest and dumbest solution, which is to just have a second interface that I run two guitar cables out of my main interface into the second one and use that just for streaming. Um, and I mean, I guess that's probably what, hey, what's up, weird guy show? How you doing? Um, uh, that's, that's probably what you do in like real streaming situations where you have two computers. You have a streaming computer and your gaming computer, uh, and you would just plug your streaming audio into your gaming computer, your streaming computer. But I don't have two computers. I have one computer, and two interfaces does technically work. So if you pick up like literally like a twenty dollar Behringer interface that has two inputs, and you have two spare outputs on your main interface, you could you could literally just run two cables over, and it works pretty well. That's what I did for my last stream. Uh, that's what I did for. I think I did that for my live stream where I did like live guitar playing and also for the one where we worked on Final Destination uh, about a couple months ago. Um, and that worked fine, but it was like a little fuzzy in one ear and I just don't trust hardware that way. Uh, so when I built this new desk, uh, I ended up moving to, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. I might be able to shift the webcam that way. Hang on. Yeah, you can kind of see it over there. Um, it's the Antelope Discrete 8, uh, which I picked up a few years ago to use as my main studio interface. And then I, I kind of soured on it. There were some weird, uh, like, clocking issues with Windows and everything. Uh, so I switched over to a Focusrite uh, Claret. Um, this one here. Uh, amazing, awesome interface. I love this one. It is especially susceptible to noise from power, though, because uh, it doesn't have a ground pin. So uh, it frustratingly picks up a ton of noise from my monitors uh, and from my graphics card, which is a super bummer. Uh, you didn't get a live notification. I'm sorry. I'm going to be here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., though, so that's, that's easy. You can just stop by every single Tuesday, if you can, and I'll be here. Um, uh, so what I am doing now and this is, this is like the best solution I was able to come with, come up with. Um, so the discrete eight has actually really powerful. Oh boy. It doesn't like being on this screen. <laughs> Hang on. I have a 4k screen just above this 1080p screen that you're seeing. And so when I drag things from there, they look enormous. <laughs> oh no. Okay, are you going to be weird on this screen? No, okay, good, good job. All right, so this is the Discrete 8 interface, uh, and it actually technically has uh, 32 channels of mixing, all built into its its own physical situation there. And it's got its own processor on board, uh, which is how actually my mic is being compressed. Uh, I have an 1176 just compressing my voice, but it's hardware, so that's not hitting my computer, which is nice. Um, so. In this case, here's my vocal, Here, here's my talking mic on channel 3, and in OBS, which I'm not going to drag on screen because then we get that crazy echoey effect, um, in OBS I'm using the ASIO plugin, uh, which you can download from GitHub, uh, and boy is that a weird headache, um, but I'm using that to listen on channel 3 for my voice mic, and then actually listen on channels 9 and 10 for my computer playback of channels one and two. And you see if I, if I play some music in the background, it comes through on those channels. So I finally have like zero latency, 
live streaming of audio. And that's that's my solution. If you can work out some kind of in-interface routing, uh, I bet you could do this with a Focusrite Sapphire or like an eight-channel uh, Scarlet or Claret. Um, uh, probably the PreSona stuff you can too. I'm not like super um, experienced with the PreSona gear, so I don't know. Uh, just about any like bigger interface usually comes with routing software that'll let you do something like this. Um, and it's it's tricky to set up, but when you get it set up, it's amazing. Uh, also, the the driver issues I was experiencing with this have all been cleared up by a new driver. So this is now my new uh, my new kind of main interface. Uh, and I'm I'm happy to be back on it. I do like the sound of it. I do like the feel of it. It was just, um, you know what it was? YouTube videos and Spotify would not play. Only like in DAW sound would happen. And you literally couldn't use anything else. So if I had Pro Tools open, if I had Ableton open, I couldn't watch YouTube. I couldn't be on Spotify. Um, and I use Spotify for referencing all the time. If I'm covering a song, I'm usually listening to it on Spotify or on YouTube. And I'm, I'm checking myself that way. So I need to be able to hear that stuff. That's why I ditched the discrete a few years ago. But now I'm back on it and I'm happy. Uh, it has a couple other cool features. There's like an app for the phone that uh, will let you control these preamp volumes digitally, which is insane. They're, they're digital preamps, so you can control them remotely, the gain. Uh, so anytime I was doing drum covers, I'd have my computer in one room because um, my control room was separate from my live room at my old house. And I'd be at the drum set just getting levels, just setting levels there. It was amazing. Um, really, really cool piece of hardware. Uh, I go back and forth on Antelope as a company, but this specific piece of gear, I, I do feel positively about. You got it, Victor. Always happy to help with this stuff. Um, streaming and, and recording is, is really, really hard work, and, and it's nice to be able to give some answers to people who are, uh, who are going through the same stuff. All right, let's take one last listen to this, and, um, and then we'll probably call it a night here. Cause I'm I'm feeling like I've I've gotten I've squeezed all the juice for this out of my brain that I can for tonight, and we'll we'll come at it fresh next Tuesday. So let's take a listen. All right, that's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. That's that's not bad for two hours of work. All right. So thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I'm really happy to be back here live streaming again. And like I said, this is going to be an every Tuesday night thing. Um, I, I cleared my Tuesday night schedules and I, I made sure my wife was okay with me disappearing every Tuesday night. And, uh, and we're going to be here making music. I'll probably also do some live performances too, um, like the the guitar live stream I did a few months back, because I really enjoy doing that too. Um, oh, thank you so much for the super chat, Stephen. That means a lot. I, I hope to see you back here soon. Um, so so yeah, this is uh, this is something I'm I'm really looking forward to doing more. If you guys have something you want to see, if you want to see more live performance, more you know, metal production of like original stuff or covers or 
I'm literally down for anything. I just love hanging out here with you guys and, and making music. So I hope to see you back here soon. Thanks for hanging out, Steven and Victor and Tyler and Franco. Weird Guy Show. Who else was here? Izzy and Richard stopped by earlier. Mulcha S. from South Korea. Thank you all for hanging out. Did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody. That's all. And thank you again, for Stephen, for the super chat. That really means a lot. Have a great night, everybody. Will Blank Canvas be going live? What's up, Karen? How's it going? Karen's a theater buddy of mine. Will Blank Canvas be going live? I think we will. I There's a reason we haven't been... Okay, real quick. Blank Canvas is my wife and I's acoustic duo that plays like local shows here in, in upstate New York. And we were doing live streams during quarantine. And then, and then my wife kind of started maybe having something resembling vocal nodes. So we're, we're holding off on that a little bit. And I was having some breathing issues earlier from hopefully allergies. Uh, so a couple things have kind of prevented blank canvas shows from happening. Um, but I will, I will let you know if we ended up doing more of those. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for hanging out. I will see you next Tuesday. Uh, have a great week. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.